Hello and welcome to Organic Edible Gardening Kitchen. Welcome, Megan. Hi, Rob. Broad beans. They're not my favourite vegetable, but for some people they're a real treat. They're not really mine either, but they're really great in a dip and they're a real nutritional powerhouse. I'm going to show you how to plant your broad bean seeds and later we're going to save our scarlet runner seeds for next year's crop. And I'm going to be using one of these buttercup pumpkins to make a delicious sweet pumpkin pie with a sticky date base. And then Nellie's going to be coming along later to tell us the virtues of pumpkin. Broad beans are a great cold weather crop and I plant it for four good reasons. Firstly, I don't want to leave a bed like this bare over winter. The rain compacts it and the cold will also kill all the fungi and bacteria in the soil. The second reason is they fix nitrogen into the soil, which is always a bonus. And at the end, I can just chop up all the green leaves and dig that back in. Thirdly, they attract bumblebees. And this is their first food of the season when these guys need it most. And lastly, not only are the beans edible, but the green tips and the flowers are also really tasty and are a great addition to winter salads and stir fries. When planting your broad bean seeds, it's really important to have good drainage. Now, if this bed was flat, I'd probably mound them up like I did the peas, but it's raised enough that they won't have a problem with that. And when I plant them, I'm going to plant them deeper than I would normally seeds. They're really, really big, and we really want to plant them at least almost double the depth of what the size of the seed is. I'm going to plant these guys about 20 centimetres apart, and I know it seems quite wide, but I do want them to have a bit of air movement, because one of the problems we can have with broad beans during the growing season is when they're too close to the soil, they'll get something called black spot, which will not be great for the plant. I'm going to put three rows in a bed like this. And at this point in time, you can put your stakes in, and bamboo stakes are great for this if you want to tie them up. Because I don't want so much the beans, and I pick a lot of the leaves off, it actually becomes more stocky, and I find I don't need to stake mine. All we've done is dig over this bed, nothing's been added. We haven't even put any compost in because green manure crop is going to be dug back in the soil and make its own compost. The great thing about broad beans is that they're pest and disease resistant. We are going to net it though because the one things that will eat them are rats and mice. So if they're a problem, now's the time to set the traps. At this time of the year, I really like to harvest my scarlet runner bean seeds and save them for next year's planting. Beans like this are at a good stage and they're nice and crunchy. Even the beans over this side here, they're a lighter brown but can still be used. But green beans like this should not be touched. Just pull these guys straight off and throw them in the basket. You can hear how dry they are. The beans are actually shaking in the ponds. Next, we're just going to take the beans out the shells, and it's really easily done. When doing this, you just want to choose the best beans. If they're weak or small, just throw them away. And what we're going to do is we're going to dry these beans. It'll probably take about four or five weeks, and we'll just put them on a windowsill that's self-facing just until they're completely dried. We can do the hammer test with this and just hit one with a hammer after that time, and if it shatters, it's dry enough. Then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to stick them in the freezer, at least for three or four days. What this will do, if there are any bean weevils, which is the main pest for this, it'll get rid of them. Then after they've been in the freezer for a few days, we can take them out, store them in a Ziploc bag in the fridge. Just remember to date and name them. Pumpkin is a hearty warming vegetable. We usually think of it as a savoury food. Here I'm going to make a sweet pumpkin pie. The first thing I'm going to do is roast this beautiful kabucha pumpkin that Rob has grown. So I'm just going to chop it up. I only need a few pieces, but you could roast some extra just for eating. I'll scoop out the seeds. 
So I'm not going to put anything on them. They're just going to go straight into an oven that's around 180 degrees for about 40 minutes. So the next thing I'm going to do is make the base of the tart. Um, I'll need my food processor. So the sweetness in this is medjool dates. This car the caramelly sweetness of the dates goes lovely with the pumpkin and the maple that's going to be in the filling. So I'm just going to pit the dates. So I'm going to put those in the food processor and take them over and give them a blend. They're nice and sticky now. I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients for the base. We've got some activated and dried almonds. You could use other nuts. Uh, pecans or walnuts would be lovely in here. I've got some activated pumpkin seeds, nutmeg, cinnamon, a nice pinch of salt, and the last thing is some dried coconut. Then I'll take this over to the blender and blend it until it's nice and sticky together. The nuts are broken down, but there's still some texture in there. It's not quite ready yet. It's a bit chunky. Give it a few more seconds. That's looking really good. It's really sticky. It's holding together well. That's going to create the framework of our pie crust. Okay. Better give that a taste. It's really nutty and sweet and I've done the perfect level of spices. Now depending on your spices, you may need to add a little more. Um, it should kind of taste a bit like a Christmas cookie or, um, or something like that. Now we're going to press the base into the tart tin. So I've lined it with some plastic wrap to ensure we can get the tart base out. You could also use a honey wrap um, pushed into the tart shell. So I'll press firmly in here, and now there's a little trick to getting it up the sides. You use your two thumbs, you push one thumb in at the bottom and one down the top. Just wetting my hands a little bit because it's so sticky and that helps my hands not stick to the mixture. You want to make sure it's nice and even up the sides and on the bottom. You don't want it too thick in either place. Now if you don't use really sticky dates like medjool dates, you might need to add a little bit of sweetener or some nut butter to help the base stick together. Okay, that's done. I'll just set that to the side. Okay. The pumpkin are ready. I'm going to take the blender because we're going to do the filling in the blender here. So I'll scoop out the flesh of these. So I need around one cup. So for these pieces, there's about half a cup per wedge. These are particularly sweet pumpkins. So you'll need to keep that in mind when you're making this pie. If you're not using the same variety, then you might need to add a little more sweetener. Now for the rest of the filling ingredients. For the creaminess in here, I've got some soaked cashews. They've been soaking for a couple of hours. I'm just going to pour off the water and give them a rinse. Pop them in here. Along with some ginger juice. To make ginger juice, I just take a grater and use the fine grate on here. Now I'll take that in my hands and just squeeze it. So you can see you're getting a lot of juice out of there. So such a quick and easy way to make fresh ginger juice. 
going to pop that in here. If you don't have fresh ginger, you could use about a half teaspoon of dried ginger. It won't give you the same fresh, zesty sort of flavour, um, but it's still a great substitute. Next, we've got our other spices. I've got two teaspoons of cinnamon, three quarters of a teaspoon of nutmeg, I've got a bit of vanilla extract. And some coconut milk. So this is just coconut milk that I've made. We've got around half cup there. Next thing is some maple syrup. So you use natural organic maple syrup. I've got a cup of that in there. Then I've got a pinch of salt. And lastly, we're going to add some coconut oil that I've melted down while it's blending. So I'll take it over to the blender. Wow, that is so sweet and the spices are lovely. Rob really does grow an incredible pumpkin. Time to put it in the pie base. Okay. This is just so pretty. So look at that colour. to get the rest out. So the coconut oil in here is what's going to help it set and become firm. But also the pumpkin as well, it's really fleshy and will help it firm up when it sits in the fridge. Just smooth that out on top. This has been in the fridge for a few hours and it's ready. So you want it to be nice and firm. So I'm just going to take that out. And you can see why we need to have the glad wrap in there. It would actually stick to the edges otherwise. Take that from under. Now I'm going to dust it with a bit of cinnamon. You could also top it with some kind of um, coconut cream but as beautiful and creamy as it is. So just a dusting of cinnamon it is lovely. So I'm gonna chop into that. That's perfect. Serve it with a fork and enjoy. Hi now. Hi Meg. Mmm, isn't it incredible what you can do with such a humble vegetable, the pumpkin? Yeah, it really is, and it's such a cheap vegetable as well. Yeah, fantastic. So pumpkin is an absolute powerhouse of nutrition. It's sweet, it's really substantial, it's low on the GI index, it's really low in calories, it's high in fibre, and it's incredibly high in all those important antioxidants, vitamin A, C and E. So we think of pumpkin as really high starch, and that's true because 90% of the calories come from carbohydrates, and 50% of the carbohydrate is starch. However, not all starch is the same. The starch component of pumpkins is actually really good for regulating insulin levels and lowering blood sugar levels, so it's fantastically good for diabetics. So pumpkins come from the same family as cucumber, zucchini and melon, and they're all incredibly high in vitamin A, but the highest of all of those is the pumpkin. And that's really important for the integrity of our skin. And finally, pumpkins are a great and nourishing food for both infants and babies. Mm -hmm.